Hello friends, welcome to another segment of my series on the cholinergic system. In the last segment, I talked to you guys about the toxic irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors. In this section, I'm going to talk to you about the reversible cholinesterase inhibitors. Specifically in this section, we're going to talk about the pharmaceutical reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. <laughs> I've picked three to discuss in my literature review as well as in here because they're representative of these class of drugs. And uh, there's no need to really go into more detail about other ones because you don't learn that much more about the cholinergic system from them. Um, now, I want you guys to notice though that there is a blog post linked down below. It is a segment from my literature review. It's short and easy to read and has citations and um, you know, it's, it's from a literature review that's uh, 25 pages long, has over 200 citations and over 15,000 words. That is a comprehensive historical uh, review of the cholinergic system. So, getting down to it. There are three pharmaceutical uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors that I want to talk about. Before I do, I want to remind you that uh, acetylcholine is the primary neuro neurotransmitter of the of the parasympathetic nervous system and acetylcholine is broken down in the in the brain by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase and that enzyme is the target of these drugs what these drugs do is inhibit that enzyme to some degree so such that acetylcholine can build up in the brain which is useful for people that have cognitive issues because it allows them to have more of that neurotransmitter uh, in case they have less cholinergic neurons as is the, as is in the case with Alzheimer's disease. So the first one we could talk about is Donapazil. Donapazil, which I always call, call Dunap... Anyway, I miss, I miss say the name each time. Uh, Donapazil is the blockbuster Alzheimer's uh, disease drug. It's the best-selling uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor in history, and it's produced by Issei and Pfizer. Uh, their brand name is Arecept. And it was approved by the FDA in 1996 for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. It's very well tolerated. It's the standard drug of the class. And uh, it's quite interesting. One, one side note about it is that it also lessens the amount of sleep apnea that people with Alzheimer's disease experience. Now, Alzheimer's disease affects sleep because with amyloid, beta amyloid buildup in the brain, um, Alzheimer's disease patients are less able to get into deep sleep during the sleep, which is unfortunate because it's a positive feedback loop. The less deep sleep they have, the, the less irrigation of the glial system that they have through the glymphatic system, and the less, uh, the more beta amyloid plaque they, they build up in the brain. So uh, this actually lessens their sleep apnea, which is quite significant. A second drug to think of is rivastigmine. Rivastigmine is interesting because it is a dual blocker of acetylcholinesterase and butyral cholinesterase. Um, it blocks both of those enzymes, which I believe is probably the reason it's less well tolerated. Um, it's also approved in the US and Europe uh, for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, but it is less prescribed than donazepil. Uh, no, donepazil. See, I told you guys I can't see that word. It's a funny word. Anyway, the third one that I wanted to mention to you is called galantamine. Uh, galantamine is not the pharmaceutical version. The pharmaceutical version is called reminyl. Galantamine is an alkaloid from a plant. Uh, it's traditionally used in Bulgarian and Turkish folk medicine for neurological problems. And as is the case with many um, folk medicine compounds that come from plants, it was isolated by a member of that uh, uh, culture, a Bulgarian Soviet scientist in 1956 called Dimitar Paskov. Um, he first isolated it and it was later used as a treatment for Alzheimer's disease. Um, the interesting thing about this, uh, this pharmaceutical is that it has a dual action as well, but unlike rivastigmine, it doesn't block a different, uh, it doesn't block butyral esterase. It blocks, um, it doesn't, it just blocks acetylcholine, but it has a dual action, which is that it binds to allosteric sites of cholinergic neurons, increasing their affinity for acetylcholine. So think of it this way. This drug has this interesting thing. It, it limits acetylcholinesterase, therefore limiting the a breakdown of acetylcholine in the brain, 
thereby increasing acetylcholine in the brain, but it also increases the sensitivity of the cholinergic neurons to acetylcholine. Unfortunately, it's not very well tolerated either, so it's not really that, in, that useful for uh, practical purposes. However, it's an interesting drug and it shows the many ways we can manipulate the cholinergic system. Now, uh, these three drugs are always prescribed in a titrating fashion. And the reason why is because, um, uh, because when, although when, they, when they're first prescribed, they do have a cognitive benefit, they also have side effects, usually nausea and gastrointestinal distress. What happens though, as the person gets adapted to the drugs, the cognitive effect does not decline. A tolerance is not built in that fashion. But in, or maybe it is, but very slightly. But what, is, what does happen is the side effects decline. So they usually double the dose every month until they reach the uh, ideal dose. Uh, and this is the case with all three of the drugs. Now, one final note I'd mention about galantamine is it has been found to increase mortality in patients with, uh, with a mild cognitive impairment. However, this mortality increase was not seen in uh, patients with Alzheimer's disease. So we're not quite certain uh, how, how related it is to the drug. Anyway, that's enough for the pharmaceutical versions. The next video will take you into the more accessible um, herbal reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Have a great day.